Hello, my name is Tanisha Sanchez, and I am a member of Iota Chi Sigma alumni chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Today, I will be reading an excerpt from the book Breaking the Cycle, a collection of short stories surrounding domestic, domestic abuse and the turmoil it causes by Zane. The introduction. This book is a departure from my typical books. However, in many ways, I consider this my most important contribution to the literary world. Fiction can serve as an educational source for those who shy away from reading manuals or textbooks. Breaking the cycle is a means to an end. From this book, I hope that you will walk away with a clearer understanding of the importance of compassion for others. Abuse is a major problem in our American society and throughout the world. No one has the right to lay hands on another person, yet it happens every single minute of every single day. People live in fear in their own homes. Instead of worrying about being carjacked, robbed out in the streets, or becoming the random victim of a crime, a crime is committed against them where they live over and over again. Domestic violence is a form of oppression. In the words of Stephen Biko, founder and martyr of the Black Consciousness Movement in South Africa, the greatest weapon the oppressor ever has is the mind of the oppressed. While most people tend to concentrate on the black eyes and bruised ribs, domestic violence does the most damage to one's psyche. No, I don't think this book will stop domestic violence altogether. It is way too big for that. All I'm asking is that you keep your mind open as you read this book. If you are abused by someone, get help. If you are witnessing someone you love being abused, encourage them to get help. Be their support system. Let them know they are not alone. Convince them that life does not have to be a daily battlefield. For those of you who equate abuse with love, you are wrong. Contrary to the old adage, love means never having to say you're sorry. People should be sorry for using their lover or their children as a human punching bag. In fact, it should never happen in the first place. There are tons of people who need anger management classes, stress reduction classes, and drug and alcohol re rehabilitation. I name these things specifically because oftentimes certain behavior patterns tend to lead to lashing out. Domestic abuse is a universal issue, but this book is focused on people of color because in our communities, we tend to try to sweep a lot of things under the rug. Incest, abuse, mental illness, and all the rest of the issues plaguing society as a whole affects us. The contributors to this book were hand selected by me, and I cannot begin to thank them for stepping up to the task at hand and developing magnificent stories that truly hit home. While I realize escapism is often a reason to read fiction, I implore you to read this book from cover to cover, no matter how painful it may be. It may save a life. Please wake up and realize that we all must take matters into our own hands and assist those in need if we intend to break the cycle. Only in retrospect do I find it strange that a beautiful 13 year old would seek out the company of six year olds. Yet even as I stood there, I knew that something was very wrong. It wasn't my puerile jealousy anymore. Though Tisha was physically maturing into womanhood, she acted as though she were six. Gone were her, Gone from her was the imaginative virtuosity of previous afternoons. Maybe that virtuosity had never been there. And I had only imagined in my desperation as I looked on. I realized that her play with the boy seemed rushed, yet calculating, as though she were on some kind of deadline. It all seemed bizarre to me, and then she asked the little boys the questions she had asked me the day before. Except that now, instead of it being, who are you angry with, it was, who do you hate? The little boys rushed up to give their responses. They didn't succumb to the hesitancy that had gripped me the day before. The boys were natural born haters. Perhaps we all were. They had people in their lives who had mistreated them and even abused them. The constant trickle of resentment was easy to darn into a reservoir of hatred. Growing up in the ghetto, surrounded by poverty and people who hated their lives, it wasn't difficult to bring forth hate. 
Learning to hate was essentially about learning to hate oneself, about realizing that one was in a situation that one did not have the wherewithal to change. Hatred isn't so much about what others have done to us. It is about what we cannot do to them. Oppressors may disdain those they oppress, but the oppressed always hate their oppressors. There is a power relationship there, the realization that no matter what one does, one will never be able to correct the inescapable injustice of one's everyday existence from the lonely echoes of my soul by D.B. Bernard. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please visit our website to listen to more stories.